Hello subscribers! Welcome to the YouTube channel of My Right Caught in 4K. Now as a fresh graduate, one of the requirements for employment is an SSS membership. So we are now live via Zoom meeting with the legal counsels from the Social Security System to discuss the Social Security System Act of 2018. Uh, we, are, we are also going to discuss on why do we need to be a member of the SSS, uh, its coverage, its purpose, and its benefits. And to know more, just keep on watching. Now first, we are going to hear from Attorney Agisando on why we need to be part of the social security system and what are the purposes of the social security system. Good evening everyone. Our group is tasked to discuss about Social Security System Law or Republic Act 8282 as amended by Social Security Act of 2018 or Republic Act 11199. I am Maureen Aguisando and together with me are my groupmates. They are Ms. Marcel Ann Abrio, Mr. Mustafa Simeon Ampatuan, Ms. Judy Beth Angulo, Ms. Carmela Colleen Arceo, and Mr. Arnel Arnoco. So when we talk about this act, actually, this was created as a social security system providing sickness, unemployment, retirement, disability, and death benefits for employees. And when we also talk about the main purpose of the social security system, SSS provides income support to government, private sector employees and their families in times of contingencies like death, old age, sickness, and disability arising from work and are financed out of the contribution of members and their employers. Now, thank you for that, Attorney Agisando. Now, can you walk us through the brief history of the social security system? So, before we will look into the details of this act, let us go back first to the brief history of social security system. So, in 1954, Representative Floro Crisologo, Senator Cipriano Primicias, and Manuel Briones introduced bills to Congress that were eventually enacted as Republic Act 1161 or the Social Security Act of 1954 during the term of Ramon Magsaysay. However, it was implemented under Carlos P. Garcia's term following Magsaysay's death on March of 1957. So on May 1, 1997, President Fidel V. Ramos signed Republic Act Number 8282 also known as Social Security Act of 1997. So the law was amended, the SSS provided better benefit packages, expansion of coverage, flexibility in investments, stiffer penalties of, for violators of the law, condemnation of penalties of delinquent employers, and the establishment of a voluntary provident fund for members. So last February 7, 2018, President Rodrigo Duterte signed Republic Act 11199 or the Social Security Act of 2018. Sounds promising, Attorney Aguisando. Personally, I want to be a member of the Social Security System. Now I want to know who are covered by this law. And who are actually covered by this law? The SSS actually was mandated by law to cover on a compulsory basis the following persons who are not over 60 years old. So all workers in private sectors, whether they are permanent, temporary, or provisional. And also all self-employed persons, regardless of trade, business, and occupations, with a monthly net income of at least 1,000, including workers of the informal sector, and also all household helpers with a monthly income of at least 1,000, and also all Filipino seafarers and all employees of a foreign government international organization of their wholly own instrumentality based on the Philippines. On the other hand, the following are also covered on a voluntary basis. So these are the parent, spouse, or child below 21 years old 
of the owner of a single proprietorship business, members who have been uh, separated from employment and who would like to continue paying his contributions. Also, overseas workers who are employed in a country that has signed a bilateral agreement with Philippine government to include Filipinos in their nationals, uh, in the social security coverage of their country. Filipino recruited by a foreign-based employer for employment abroad or Filipinos who uh, legitimately entered a foreign country, example, as a student or tourist, and are eventually employed. Also, persons who have not been an SSS member, whether legally married to a currently employed and actively paying SSS member, and who devotes his time fully in the management of his household and family affairs. Next time, we are going to hear from Attorney Abrio on who are eligible to be self-employed members. Good day. So now we will talk about who are self-employed members of the SSS. So when we say self-employed, uh, this is any person whose income is not derived from unemployment. So this includes but not limited to the following. All self-employed professionals licensed by the Professional Regulations Commission or those licensed to practice law. This also um, covers partners and single proprietors of a business. Actors, actresses, directors, scriptwriters, and news correspondents who do not fall within the definition of the term employee. So when we say employee, this is any person who rendered service for an employer, which services are compensated. So this also includes professional athletes, coaches, trainers licensed by the Games and Amusement Board, as well as jockeys and trainers licensed by the Philippine Racing Commission.
voluntary coverage of the social security system law, Attorney Abreu. Now we will talk about voluntary coverage. So uh, this is covered by SSS on a voluntary basis. So this uh, includes overseas Filipino workers, non-working spouse of SSS members, and coverage of separated members. Now let's talk about uh, the people who are not covered by this app. Now who are not covered by this app? So, the following are not covered by this act. Um, purely casual employees. Employees serving on alien vessel outside the Philippines. Employees of the Philippine government or any instrumentalities and agencies. Employees of foreign government, international organization, and their wholly owned instrumentalities. And lastly, temporary employees if excluded by SSC regulations. And the next, to next topic will be who are the legal dependents of the members of the SSS? And this will be discussed by Ms. Arceo. Thank you. Who are the legal dependents of members? The legitimate, legitimated or legally adopted child who is unmarried, not gainfully employed and not over 20 one years of age or over 21 years of age provided that he is congenitally incapacitated and incapable of self-support physically or mentally, the legitimate spouse dependent for support upon the employee and the legitimate parents wholly dependent upon the covered employee for regular support. So what do you mean by beneficiaries, attorney? Now, who are the beneficiaries? Now, the dependent spouse, until he remarries, and dependent children, who shall be the primary beneficiaries in their absence, the dependent parents, and subject to the restrictions imposed on dependent children, the legitimate descendants, and illegitimate children, who shall be the secondary beneficiaries. In the absence of any of the foregoing, any other person designated by the covered employees as secondary beneficiaries. For example, Attorney Arceo, if you're a business owner, what are your obligations as an employer? Now, the obligations of the employers is one, to make timely report of employees' coverage. Number two, to make timely remittance of premiums. Now, take note that any employer who after deducting the monthly contributions or loan amortizations from his employee's compensation, fails to remit and the said deductions to the SSS within 30 days from the date they became due shall be presumed to have misappropriated such contributions or loan amortizations and shall stop, suffer the penalty provided in Article 315 of the Revised Penal Code.
College Attorney Ardokot, who will introduce us to the SSS benefits. Now for uh, SSS benefits, covered employees are entitled to a package of benefits under the Social Security and Employees Compensation Programs. Cases of uncertainty like disability, uh, what are the benefits that one member can avail? In the event of death, disability, sickness, uh, maternity, and old age. Also, the self-employed and voluntary members also get the same benefits as covered employees except those benefits um, under EC program. Well, basically, the SSS provides for a replacement of income lost on account of aforementioned contingencies. The benefits under the Social Security Program are the following. Sickness, maternity, retirement, disability, death, funeral, and unemployment. What if a member of the Social Security System will be sick attorney? Uh, is there any benefits from the Social Security System? Amen. Now, on sickness benefits, a daily cash allowance paid for the number of days a member is unable to work due to sickness or an injury. A covered employee who has paid at least three monthly contributions in the 12-month period immediately preceding the semester of sickness and is confined for more than three days in a hospital or elsewhere with the commission's approval shall for each day of compensable confinement or fractions thereof be paid by his employer or the SSS if such person is unemployed an allowance which is equivalent to 90% of his average daily salary credit. Now, uh, with regards to maternity benefits, a daily cash allowance also granted to female member who is unable to work due to childbirth or miscarriage emergency of or termination of pregnancy. A covered female employee who has paid at least three monthly maternity contributions in the 12-month period preceding the semester of her childbirth, abortion, or miscarriage, and who is currently employed shall be paid a daily maternity benefit equivalent to 100% of her present basic salary allowances and other benefits or the cash equivalent of such benefits for 60 days. So what do you mean by beneficiaries, attorney? Funeral benefits. So funeral benefits is a cash benefit given to whoever paid for the burial expenses of the deceased member. A funeral grant of 2,000 pesos shall be paid to help defray the cost of funeral expenses upon the death of a covered member. These are permanently totally disabled employee or retiree. Last but not the least is debt benefits. Debt benefits is a cash benefit granted either as a monthly pension or a lump sum amount to the beneficiaries of a deceased member. The qualifying conditions for these benefits is uh, a monthly debt pension is granted to primary beneficiary or beneficiaries of 
deceased member who had paid at least 36 monthly contribution prior to the semester of death. Primary beneficiaries or bene uh, beneficiary are the dependent spouse until he or she remarries and dependent legitimate legitimated or legally adopted and illegitimate children who are below 21 years old, not gainfully employed, and uh, not married. Meanwhile, a lump sum amount is granted to beneficiary or beneficiaries of the deceased member who had paid less than 36 monthly contributions prior to the semester of death. If there is no primary beneficiaries, the member's secondary beneficiary, um, which is the dependent parents, shall be given a lump sum amount. A lump sum amount is also granted to designated beneficiaries and legal heirs in the absence of primary and secondary beneficiaries. 